The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good morning, folks. Uh, not Larry Pesavento. This is Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. Uh, this is today's, uh, today is uh, November the 26th. It's terrific Tuesday. Thanks so much for uh, joining me. Look, if you're listening, this show is being replayed at my normal one to two Trader's Edge time frame. I'll make the show as pertinent as I possibly can. If you are listening live, I would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. We'll go ahead and bisect and dissect whatever instrument it is that you've got an interest in. If you can't call in, uh, we've got you covered there. Uh, but do it early. Send me an email. It's just simply because of these internet service providers and so forth. I hate you to send an email and it doesn't reach me until the uh, last segment when there's two minutes to go. That doesn't work real well. But send me an email, Steve at tfn.com. Inside the subject heading, uh, please put radio show question. Of course, in our tigers and any ping will do. Uh, low, everything is uh, open. Uh, phone Phone lines are open. No calls just yet. No emails just yet. No pings just yet. Well, I think there might have been a request to go take a look at the spot volatility index. So we'll certainly go ahead and do that. But I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here today. But uh, this hour, it's all about you. So feel free to get in contact with us. But let's go ahead and get uh, this show uh, kicked off uh, right now as we take a look at the uh, U.S. markets out here. You've got a mixed bag in the U.S. equity futures. Let me go ahead and get my screen out here. You'll take a look and see that the Dow futures are up 17 points. The S&P is flat. It's off uh, one tick, down a quarter of a point. The NQ is up one quarter of a point, and the Russell is off uh, two. Spot volatility index, it's up three pennies, trading out at 11.90. Uh, in Asia last night, a mixed bag. You had the uh, Hang Seng off 79 points, a quarter of a percent. Basically, the Shanghai was up um, was up one, so that's flat. The Nikkei up 81, three tenths of a percent. Uh, the S&P 200 in Asia up eight tenths of a percent. Trading out at uh, 67, 87 over in uh, Europe right now. The DAX is trading lower and the FTSE is higher. We take a look at Goldilocks off a of buck. Silver up three pennies. Natural gas down six cents. Another uh, move to the downside. We'll have to check see if price is trading now below the bottom of its uh, weekly profile out there, which would most certainly suggest lower price. But before we do that, we're going to go out to Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Uh, good morning, Steve. Uh, I'm doing fine, and I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it's, it's a great time to be with family and celebrate what the Lord's done for us. Absolutely, and uh, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, back at you. And uh, now, are you are you the chef, or is your family the chef, or are you heading out for for Thanksgiving? <laughs> uh, I'm from Tennessee, and we're living in Palm Harbor now, so we're not going home this year. But we'll probably go up for Christmas, though. So. Okay. Well, good, good, good. Um, so Walmart, uh, tell us, uh, I know you wanted to talk about Walmart. I believe you do. Um, are you, what are you looking for here? Uh, I'm not in it currently, but uh, I was noticing there's a, a shooting star candle on the monthly, and uh, it was almost a nine count. And uh, I just wondering what your general analysis of Walmart is it's being a holiday season where they're going to be selling a lot of merchandise and I'm just curious what your thoughts and analysis would be on it. So in, in order for there to be, in order for that monthly candle to be a shooting star um, at the close of the month, it's going to have to get rid of some of this wick to the downside. So there's just too much of the wick um, that is exposed for this to actually be a shooting star candle out there. So that would be the first caution that I have. But of course, as you know, we really can't confirm what the candle is until the end of the month, uh, be sometime next week out there. Um, so, so that, so if you're basing it on what the current candle looks like, it's close. 
Uh, but, uh, Jim, it's no cigar just yet. If we do take a look at the monthly time frame, let me pull this over here. Um, what we can see in the monthly time frame is that uh, coming all the way back to the November 2016 lows, if we begin our wave count, first back in November of 2016 on a monthly basis, and you had mentioned the uh, TD setup nine count, that was a TD setup nine count bottom. Then, uh, so this is back in November of 2016 out there. Then price moves higher, forms a TD setup uh, nine count top. It does it with bar number eight, uh, moves lower. Um, no pattern, uh, just a retracement, no pattern on the monthly time frame uh, that it was a bottoming then. But if we do take a look at where we're at right now, we start uh, from that uh, November of 2016 count and use our Chapman wave tools out here, we do get to wave number seven. So it's been in wave number seven for quite some time. That actually, that count began back in June of this year. Well, I take that back. It began, the seventh wave began in September of this year. We're already in November. So we can see that this can continue. So it could continue into next month. Jim, it could continue into uh, January. Price is moving higher doing less relative energy. So if there were to be a shooting star candle at month end. Right now, it's actually a bullish candle. It's a bull sash candle out here. But if it were to be a, a bearish reversal candle, then what we would expect is price to go test Stevie's green line. That's currently priced at 113.20. And below that, that would set up something else. But that's what the monthly time frame chart is showing us. The profiles are so much lower. 84.19 is the top of the box. We really can't use that. From a weekly perspective, and, and if I didn't mention it, Jim, uh, this month should be bar number eight on that monthly chart. So reason between bar number eight, uh, it was showing roads momentum indicator topping signal as well as wave number seven. So you do, uh, your, your eye is in the right spot with regard to Microsoft. Is it or is it not going to go ahead and form a... Uh, uh, a top out here. Now, with regard to your shooting star candles out here, you did get one on the weekly basis last week. And and if you were referring to that one, Jim, instead of the monthly, my apology for uh, not hearing that uh, clearly. So in the case of the weekly chart, it does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. So far this week, what we've seen is price try to get back up and get over the oscillator and change line, Stevie's green line. It hasn't done that. That is resistance, 120.75. And this would suggest that price could pull all the way back to 111.22. That's what the weekly time frame chart is communicating to us. From a daily time frame out here, Jim, if we take a look at it, we try to find some kind of bottom signal out here. Let me just do a uh, quick uh, wave count, see where we're at. Uh, no, nothing there. So I don't really have anything on the daily time frame out here other than to say that price is trading with inside its profiles. Now, are you looking for, what are you looking to do here? I was just uh, looking through different uh, scenarios on the charts, and I thought that one was interesting that the monthly yeah. looked like it could possibly be uh, topping out. Yeah, it does. so the weekly the weekly shows that the the weekly has a topping pattern. The monthly has a potential, and the daily doesn't have really anything uh, of the topping patterns that I use. And uh, it just shows consolidating between 117.13 and 119.85. I would watch 117.13. If Walmart were to close below that, that would suggest to move back to the uh, 114.93 level, and below that, then we would really have a change in trend confirmed change in trend on the weekly time frame out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Walmart. Uh, good to uh, hear from you as always. And uh, happy Thanksgiving again to you and your family. And thanks for those well wishes. So, you too. Bye-bye. You bet. You bet. That was Jim in Palm Harbor. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Filling in for Larry Pesavento. Of course, I'm filling in for myself. If it's 1.14 in the afternoon and you're listening in, we'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow Futures up 29, S&P up one and a half. It's 918 in the morning. If you're listening live at 118, thanks so much for uh, doing that. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, today's going to be my last uh, show for the week out here as we uh, enter into the uh, Thanksgiving Day holiday. Uh, but uh, let's go out to uh, Philadelphia right now, have a cup of Joe with uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm very well. Thanks for taking the call. I have already had my three cup limit, so uh, how about you? Okay. I am not a coffee drinker. I love the flavor of coffee. I love coffee ice cream. I grew up in Detroit, and one of our uh, one of the confectionaries there was called Sanders or Saunders out there. They made some of the best uh, sweets. Of course, it's kind of hard to go wrong making sweets. You know, even probably you and I could make something out there. But they had the best candies, the best coffee candies. And um, I used to uh, suck on those when I would do a lot of flying. I, folks, I have flown millions. Little, I'm not. This is not an exaggeration. Just on Delta, I'm close to three million miles uh, there. Uh, but those were in the old days. But I used to suck on those candies john and believe it or not they had enough caffeine they had enough caffeine in there i could never fall asleep you know great flavor but i just don't drink uh, coffee that much so steve uh, you are you uh, i just have to say steve-o you are on the verge of telling us all a bit too much about yourself oh okay 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 sorry about that oh, just the verge, just the verge just the verge. I, I i say that in jest of course i know i know, I know uh steve i, I wanted to sorry. ask you uh if you could help me with uh, facts, figures, support levels on the March Arabica coffee futures. Yes. Uh, I'm hopeful this conversation is actionable and topical for people who are, you know, uh, trading to make money. I've been uh, trading 
as uh, you know, uh, and uh, many of the people in uh, TFNN's Tiger's Den, the coffee futures all this year, uh, given that has been uh, at a very low price under, say, a dollar a pound wholesale. Yeah. And, Steve, it's just started to emerge. Now, I've been long. Uh, there, there were lows in August, then October, and we've had a rally that's been going on the past, oh, eight, nine weeks. And uh, whether or not this is the start of something major or not, I do not know. But I will, I'll just uh, talk out loud here yeah. what my experience over 30 years trading uh, commodity futures is that when uh, commodity prices, be it an agricultural or uh, uh, industrial metals, uh, has laid at lows and formed bear market bottoms, you know, for an extended period of time, it is often very difficult to say in advance when it's going to surge and why. And the only way to make money on those big, huge moves is to get involved early and stay, you know, uh, uh, stay involved as a trader probing for bottoms and then once the crowd, including yours truly, actually understands why a market's gone up 50 or more percent, yeah. only then do you discover, oh, that was the reason. So I don't know, you know, I don't live down in Brazil. I don't have great uh, intelligence like Andy Heck used to have or still does. But um, so I'm long, I'm trading from the long side, uh, and I'm wondering if your work can help us identify supports we can look at uh, on uh, on dips here today and next week. Okay, sure, sure. But the first thing, though, I do have to make a correction. You do have the tools, and you do know why uh, coffee uh, bottom when you were taking a look at the uh, long-term chart out there, and that's because of the uh, portion of the Chapman Wave tool that you and Saratoga Bob uh, developed out there. Oh, which was really, you know, came from Basel in essence, but it was that wave number seven, that letter G. And if we take a look at, uh, we were talking about earlier with Jim and Palm Harbor <coughs> about shooting star candles. And uh, back in October of 2014, a uh, nice little shooting star candle that formed inside of the monthly time frame chart for coffee. And if we just do our Chapman wave count to the downside, lo and behold, the uh, month of May of uh, 2019, uh, is where coffee made that seventh wave move. A nice little bullish or big bearish and bo big bullish engulfing candle out there. And on a substantial move higher, I know this isn't exactly what you called for, but we do have the time. On a substantial move higher, uh, the 156 level is where price broke down. And that may be the longer term uh, price target out there. Here, with regard to support or resistance, are four different time frames the uh, 6240 daily and weekly. And so with regard to levels of support there, you're above the weekly top of its box, above the daily top of its box. So any pullback uh, to support would first be at 113.30 to 111.22, and that's looking at the daily bear structured profile. So a few days ago, uh, which would be November 21st, I believe that was last Thursday, price closed over that bear structured box, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern out there. And when I say pattern, folks, I'm just referring to a, a bear structured box wasn't the completion of like an A to B equals CD or something along those lines, but just tells you how strong the move on a daily basis is. Now, we go to the shorter term time frame, John. If I pull over just, for example, a 30-minute chart out here, you and I can understand why price went ahead and topped uh, la, what was the exact time frame was at 12.45 yesterday afternoon. Price was moving higher, doing less relative energy, and then it was also farming forming bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. That count actually confirmed at uh, about uh, 1, uh, 115 or so. And then the price then since has moved lower, but not below its breakout level. So the breakout level is 115.45. I don't know whether price will get down there 
or not, but that would be the next support level or the next buy the dip area. If on a 30 minute chart, if price were to close below 115.45, you know, then we'd have to search elsewhere out here. But we can understand uh, why price stopped, or I can, because of the pattern that is out there. And now it's done its normal thing. It has, even though it hasn't gotten back to 115.45, that may, in essence, John, just be a signal of just the strength that's inside there. But to answer your question on a 30 minute basis, it's 115.45. If I flip this to a longer term time frame, my, my oscillator and change line is going to be wrong. The breakout level here uh, would be 114.65. What would be the short, shortest term time frame, John, that you would use for trading coffee? Because I want to be helpful to you. And maybe it's not a 30 minute or a 60 minute. Yeah, no, those two time frames, you know, Steve, I just, I, uh, I have to compliment you publicly on incorporating all your tools into that automated system so you can pull up at a glance yeah. all that detail and just look for some key items. Uh, that's just terrific. Um, well, one of the nice things, John, one of the nice things will be when I get uh, this tool completed here, I think, for us, which is this is just simply an automated wave count tool now. So uh, now I can do it manually, which I did when we took a look at the monthly time frame chart, but I don't want to have to look for those things. I want the computer to go out there and find them for me and then put those into some type of uh, market analyzer that would then tell me, okay, what's going on? So this, for example, you're asking about coffee out here. And so when we take a look at coffee, it's the uh, gray, I'm gonna just, it's, the, it's the line above the gray highlighted area, but here you can see what the TD setup counts are for its 30 minute, 60 minute, two hour, four hour, five hour, daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. So just simply so that you know where price is at, any type of potential topping signals along those lines. But um, John, we're about to go to hard break. You're welcome to hang on and I can uh, clear up anything uh, else on the charts for you. Or, or if not, you know, have a happy Thanksgiving. Your choice. Thanks so much, Steve, I appreciate it. You bet. That was John in Philly. I think we're going out to California. We get back from this break. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he's watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you and your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. The uh, markets are open uh, right now. We've got the uh, Dow up uh, about five points. The S&P is flat. Uh, NASDAQ up four. But let's go out to uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you doing uh, this morning? And a happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. I'm doing just great, Steve. Same to you. And, uh, Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. Appreciate you taking the call. I, I wanted to, uh, if you don't mind, going back to Clovis, we had talked about previously. Yes. And my specific question was, I know we talked about on the longer term, I believe it was a monthly, uh, the old Stevie Red Line. Yep. That were, to get above that at, at the time, I think it was 983. I believe it was, and that could have changed between, you know, at that time yes. and, and present. But uh, I figured if we could get through, I guess it's two and a half more trading days that stayed above that, it would be, you know something to be uh, watching and, and to, you know, pay attention to. Yes, yes. So so the monthly chart is now up on our screen out here, and uh, and that level has changed, just so you know. I'm looking for my data box out here. Where the heck is it? Uh, well, I'm going to just have to do it this way. So the actual number as we speak right now uh, is uh, going to be 1054. So, so the level has moved up. It's 1054. I believe we're trading at about 1027 or so right now, and that's the key level. And folks, what Brent is referring to, so this has had one heck of a nice rally off of the uh, lows out here. But what we can see with regard to Clovis Oncology is we can take this back to November of 2017. And since November of 2017, price has been below the oscillator and change line, what Brent and I affectionately refer to Stevie's red or green line. It's red right now, which tells us on a monthly basis that the price oscillator, which is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average, so that would be 39 and 19 months out there for that calculation, um, that uh, the price oscillator is still below zero. And if price, this is where real resistance is at, and that's at that 1054 level. And Brent, if, if price can clear that, whether that's in the uh, month of uh, November or it's December, you know, that would, be a, that would be a huge change in trend signal on a longer term basis. If we look at profile levels for daily, weekly, and monthly, the monthly aren't in play right now. That would say if you close above that 1054, you move up to about 1574, the bottom of the uh, monthly profile. But you're above the weekly and the daily timeframes out there. Um, with regard to the daily time frame, I don't see any topping pattern in play uh, just yet. You're going to be in bar number seven uh, is what it looks like. Uh, or bar, uh, bar number seven was yesterday. I don't know why my system isn't picking up today's feed, but today will likely be bar number eight. So that's a caution sign out there. But are you in the trade? Um, I believe you are, right? Oh, yes, I am. I've yeah. been in it for a while here. And, and uh, when I did buy in it initially, it was with the intention of it being, you know, at least intermediate to potentially longer term trade. Okay. So, so your level, so we know you've got the 1054 area to be watching. Uh, you know you want to just watch and observe the daily time frame as it completes that TD9 count likely on Monday or Tuesday out there. Watch for price and Stevie's uh, red line at that stage. I know you know how to calculate that on the daily chart uh, because that's where price could pull back to, which right now is around 725. But, you know, let's take this one thing at a time. On the weekly uh, level, the next area of resistance is 1353. And that's where most recently it broken down from a weekly time frame. And that was back on July 19th. But everything looks good. Potential stalling scenario with bar eight and nine coming to fruition here, possibly a pullback. So you've just got to watch for that. But 
you know, prices up at resistance. That's the problem on that monthly chart. You get up to resistance, and if you get a topping signal on the daily basis, it would not be unusual to see some type of natural retracement out there. Not necessarily the kind that you would want to sell or short uh, this instrument, but just uh, some type of retracement. That's what I see right now. Okay, that's great information, Steve. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Appreciate the additional analysis there. Just, you know, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Everybody else out there do the same. Will do. And we all have a lot to be thankful for, so just, you know, oh, take care, and, and I'll plan on talking to you. Sounds yeah, great. Probably next week. Yeah, that sounds great. We'll talk to you on uh, Monday or Tuesday, hopefully. Um, so thanks for calling, as always. All right, take care, Steve. You, you bet. So right, uh, there right, was bye. a question earlier. Yeah, there was a question earlier in the den to take a look at the spot volatility index. I believe that was Jimmy. I don't know, Jimmy, what it is that you needed uh, uh, for me. But if we do take a quick uh, peek at the spot volatility index, uh, you know, here's what we know. It's at 1186. The 50-day exponential moving average is 1395. Things will never get rolled into the downside substantially and sustained until you see continued closes above the 50-day exponential moving average. Here, if you want to take a look at it, we can see that the uh, bottom the, the, the top panel is the spot volatility index, Jimmy, and uh, we can see that the uh, spot volatility index has been below its 50-day exponential moving average since October 11th. And then if you look at the S&P 500 right down below, let me just take the rectangle here. So you take that little rectangle feature on Stevie's software. Let's go to the exact date. Okay, so we're right there. And here, so when the spot volatility is below the 50-day exponential moving average, unless it's formed the bottom, right? So that's the only caveat out here. What you will typically see is the S&P 500 move higher to sideways. And if we take a look at what's transpired uh, since then, it's not a tool to catch the bottom. It's not going to be your TD setup nine count, your roads momentum indicator, wave number seven or G or anything along those lines to, to more clearly identify a bottom. But boy, it is something that you most certainly pay attention to. So I don't know what else uh, to uh, share with you with regard to the spot volatility, index, but uh, happy to. Uh, just your general thoughts was what you were looking for. So, you know, the general thoughts are, look, where these, where the S&P 500 can make a top is when uh, price gets below this uh, Bollinger Band reading out here. That's the red line. So if you're asking yourself, folks, what are the red lines? The blue line on the top panel was the 50-day exponential moving average. The red lines are the 50 to 1 uh, using the standard deviation uh, tool for the Bollinger Bands out there. Uh, it's the only place where I use 51. Usually it's 20 to 2, I believe, are the normal default settings out there. Um, but it does show that uh, this is where a bottom can form, not that a bottom will form out there, Jimmy. So hopefully that helps you out. Let me take a quick peek. I know that there were a message or two emails that have come in. Yeah, I've got uh, one here, one from Chris B., who wants to take a look at... Uh, uh, Chris bought uh, Vion. Let's go take a look at it. Take a look at its three time frames out here. V E O N is the uh, ticker symbol. V E O N. Let me get on all my charts out here. And it has started a nice move up. Just looking for analysis on it. So, um, if we take a look at this, uh, Chris, here's the first thing that you that you know. Price is above the top of its daily box, <clears throat> 246. That's what it did yesterday in that gap to the upside with gigantic volume behind it. Uh, yesterday's move also took the weekly up above the top of its profile, 253. So a close on Friday above that uh, is good. Now, if this is only a counter trend rally, then in essence, this is where it would stop. Just looking at profiles, this was a bullish structured profile that price closed below last week and the week before. Uh, we'll go take a look at the other charts to suggest to see if this is there anything else that suggests a counter trend rally i'm just saying if this were a counter trend rally chris this is where it would stop uh, at the center of that bullish structured weekly profile but if price is able to close above 266 chris then this suggests a price move up to 305 and then it's ticker symbol v e o n not to confuse it with warren zevon but instead vion Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're listening live and it's 1.38 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, hey, we'll be back for the last segment for the rest of this week in just a few minutes. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Welcome back, folks. Uh, most of the markets here are taking a little bit of a respite after yesterday's uh, big move. Uh, gold is uh, trading down five bucks, fourteen fifty-eight right now, and the bottom of that profile is fourteen sixty twenty. That's the level you want to be watching uh, for the day. But let's go back out to Chris's question here with regard to ticker symbol V E O N and finish up the analysis there. So. Um, if I take a look at the weekly time frame chart here for you, uh, Chris, uh, formed a nice TD set up nine count bottom, did it with bar number eight the week of September 20th out here. Um, this suggests that uh, price could move up to the 315 level. That is where price had broken down. That was on the weekly time frame. Today is going to be, or not this week, this week looks like it'll be bar number six of a TD set up nine count. You should have another three to four weeks out there of uh, moves uh, higher or so it would appear. Charts, oh, geez, I didn't uh, set that. That, uh, thank you, Bill, out here. So let me post that chart here for Chris because Bill didn't see it. Chris most certainly didn't see it. So here is uh, here is the uh, work. Uh, here's the uh, chart out here. Here's the here's the TD setup nine count. The eight being the uh, bottom out there, and there's your 315 resistance uh, level out there. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, uh, this is going to show, I believe this is going to show a nice little Rhodes momentum indicator bottom panel out here on a monthly basis. Price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, and then you got the bullish reversal candle back in uh, June of this year. This would suggest that price could move up to the 423 area. Not that it can't move beyond that, but that is your resistance level. So all looks good out here with uh, regard to ticker symbol VEON, Chris, and and uh, best of luck uh, with that uh, trade. Now, I was mentioning as we were coming back from that, uh, oh, by the way, we've got two more segments. Uh, I uh, was uh, mistaken when I took a look at my clock out there, but I was mentioning gold. So let's pull up the uh, chart here for gold and what to be watching here. Again, right now we've got price testing the bottom of that daily profile. 
um, at 1460.20. Price is already well below the weekly profile level, 1495. That's a real suggestion of a of a change in trend out there for Goldilocks. Now that here, let me just put up the. Uh, Give me a second here to to do this uh, to I got to do O2, I believe, dash 20. And let me pull up the weekly time frame chart out here. So there's really a couple things to be watching here on the weekly for gold. Let me try to pull this over. What the heck is going on? Well, it's not pulling over just yet. So um, ah, here we go. OK, perfect. Just got to be a little patient. So, it, so here's there's there's a couple of possibilities out here for gold, and this is what we want to be able to watch. Number one, uh, gold uh, generated the erodes momentum indicator topping pattern out here. It actually confirmed uh, in October October 11th of 2019, uh, so uh, you know a, a month ago plus out here and it, and it confirmed because of the bearish engulfing candle and the close below Stevie's green line out here. Now, it is possible that uh, two weeks ago, November 15th, that gold had bottomed. It formed the TD setup nine count pattern. That bottom can form bars eight, nine or the bar following nine. So that's the one that's labeled one on here, out here. And that low, by the way, we're taking a look at the uh, February uh, 20 contract out here, 2020 contract. That low, by the way, trying to grab it, there we go. The low is 1446.20. Now, that's a key level because if price were to close below that, then what that sets up, so it's possible bottom, potential of a bottom out here. It's just we don't have that in the daily signals. Uh, so it's why to be very cautious. But if price did close below that, uh, a run back into the uh, 1286 area would be um, would be uh, would be a possibility. A real possibility. But right now, what you want to watch for the day is just stick with the daily time frame. Will the key level of support hold or not? And that number, again, is 1460.20. We're at 1460.00, even Stephen out here. That's what we see when we take a look at gold. Let me take a quick peek at the market out here because what I want to do is try to identify for you those things that are really pertinent. Yeah, I can make this pertinent for both the 946 time frame as well as 146 in the afternoon. So, what's another thing that you and I should look for? Let's go take a look at the the advanced decline oscillator reading at all. So this is really interesting here. So I'm going to share with you a piece of magic. Now, you guys, each of you who have charting applications, well, I think you can do this. You, you should be able to do this on your own. If you got a charting application, you should have a data feed that gives you the uh, daily advance and decline um, uh, numbers out here. And that's the center panel, which we're looking at, which is the advanced decline oscillator, is uh, taking a look at the difference. And you can use your, you should be able to use your MACD tool to calculate this, the difference between the 19 and the 39 period um, exponential moving average. Make sure that your MACD tool allows you to choose between exponential and simple moving averages. Then you'll be able to replicate what it is that we have here. Um, but so that center panel here, which is the advanced decline oscillator reading, it got up to the zero threshold level uh, yesterday. Um, today, we might give it a second red arrow out here. I'll give it a second red arrow right now and just move it over so you know what I'm taking a look at, what I'm talking about. Now, you'll see other red arrows in the center panel of the screen. What Stevie referred to those as is the advanced decline oscillator threshold uh, reversal area. Uh, failure pattern out here. Uh, I should come. I, I need Basil's help. Basil's got all these great names out there. I, you know, I need to come up with uh, some of these uh, great names for this. Or maybe you in the den have got a great name. But here's the here's the most important thing. Um, you're, depending on where this clicks, it's only 9:48 in the morning. I don't know what this is going to uh, look like uh, come the end of the day. But if it does reverse downward, you've got another failure at that threshold level. Now. Here's the deal. I want you to take a look at the red arrows that show the other failures at those levels uh, in the advanced decline oscillator. And then I want you to go down below, which is the spot volatility index. So this takes us back to Jimmy asking about, you know, just generally what the spot volatility index is providing to us, information, assistance here. If you take a look at the green arrows, the green arrows are lined up with those red arrow failures in the advanced decline oscillator reading, which line up with the price level of what the New York Stock Exchange was trading at at those time periods. Now, when things, when a real top forms out here, when there's real movement to the downside, what you will see is you will see that uh, spot volatility is trading above or get ready to start trading above this, the 50-day uh, exponential moving average.
The unfortunate thing is the last time that we had this failure pattern, this was on the trading day of November 15th out there. You'll see the red arrow. Um, but the, uh, the caution signal, as I shared with subscribers, was, hey, look, you've got a sell signal, but it's just not the type of sell signal with any gumption behind it. And in order to have gumption, you've got to get the com combination of that spot volatility it's just right. It's like three little bears out there. It's got to be just right. And right now, it's not just right. But it is a pattern worth paying attention to. Now, look, if price closes above the zero threshold line, as we speak right now, 949, it's printing at 277. This will be a, a confirmation that buyers are back in control of the market because there was a slight close above it yesterday. So I give it just a little bit of wiggle room. Yesterday's reading, if I can find it out here, was 1.76. To me, that's not good enough. And you need two days, two closes above that line to say that bulls are in control. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and opine and tell you that the uh, bulls are not in control of the marketplace. I'm just not that foolish to 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 tell you that, even though I did try a short trade out there and it hasn't worked out exactly as planned. Uh, but that's what trading is all about. We've got stops in place and proper position sizing, so it really doesn't uh, matter. It matters, but it doesn't matter if you know what I mean. We're alive for the next trade out here. But if we do take a look at the Taz Daily profiles as an example, just in case we've got Jay listening in, who'd, who would most certainly want to know, and you would want to know, because he would be asking on your behalf, are there any new profiles out here for the equity futures contracts? And the answer is there's not there's not so things as we speak at 950 and if it looks this way at 150 they're still all out bullish in the equity markets we'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best in what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Don Q, Don Quixote writes in, wants to take a look at uh, copper out here. Um, I think because he's taking a look at uh, ticker symbols, SSCO and FCX out there, and also looking at Rio Tinto and BHP for some long-term entry points out here. So because you say long-term, now this chart out here, Don, has got your 60, 240 daily and uh, weekly time frames out here, uh, and their TAS market profiles. You can see the price has run into resistance at the top of its weekly box, uh, $2.68 out there. So it just offers a word of caution, um, and you're looking for the long-term. So if I look at the long-term, for me, the long-term or intermediate term you know we can use a monthly time frame chart and this is where I, I really suggest some caution out here with regard to copper specifically with regard to those other instruments we're not going to have enough time to go back and take a look at it but you were specifically asking about copper and what copper would need to do in order to suggest that it's got more mojo to the upside it must close above stevie's red line out here which is at 271 now that number is going to change over time out here but what copper has done so far this month it's tested and it has rejected that and that's actually bearish so it just suggest being cautious especially while we take a look at the weekly time frame chart that is now up against resistance it would be helpful to see uh, price close over that level out there uh, but just a real so that's what I see when I take a look at uh, copper out there Don I hope that that helps you out I wish I'd gotten your message just a tad earlier and to finish it off because we do have one more request and this will be the last show of the week for me as we uh, prepare for the uh, Thanksgiving holiday Econa ECA is the ticker symbol and does look like this might be a good entry point for econ out here look it's trading with inside its daily bullish structured profile it's weekly bullish structured profile those levels of support are 399 and four so if you want to take a stab at it um, you know use those areas as uh, killer levels that you don't want to see price close below this did form a TD setup nine count a valid bottom out there so that suggests that you really need to see price close above Stevie's red line that's 418 in order to get up into that 452 area. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. I'm sure on behalf of Larry Pesavento and myself, we wish each of you, you, your family, your friends, everyone that you know, a happy Thanksgiving. Be safe out there, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next Monday. Take care, folks.